A young child is recovering tonight after being attacked by a wildcat at a popular reserve in Poway. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. An investigation is underway to figure out exactly what type of cat got aggressive enough to jump on a main trail and onto the child's back. News 8's Lamore Abrams has details. The attack happened right here, Blue Sky Reserve in Poway, middle of the afternoon. Now wildlife officials are back there searching for the animal. Still not sure if it was a bobcat or a mountain lion. In front There's of like marks of his foot. It's a startling image to come across on a busy trail. He walked across the trail. They weren't sure if it was a mountain lion or a bobcat. And my neighbor saw the mountain lion coming up, literally walking on the asphalt on our street. Whatever it was, they figured it did some damage when rangers sent everyone away. We said, hey, we need everyone to, to evacuate. That's when hikers started putting the pieces together. We saw a lot of people with little kids out there today. And at 2.40 in the afternoon, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife got a call about a four-year-old attacked. The young child hiking with his family at the Blue Sky Reserve when a wild cat came out of nowhere, jumping on him from behind, scratching his back and thighs. The family yelling loud enough for the cat to run off. Three feet tall, six feet in length, brownish or tan. So very possible that it's a mountain lion, but it hasn't been confirmed yet that it's a mountain lion. Could be a bobcat. This Department of Fish and Wildlife spokesman Tim Daly says it's also possible the animal attacked the child because he appeared vulnerable. Apparently among the five family members, this was separated into two groups. And there was one of the children that sort of bounced back and forth between the two groups. So he or she was in the middle. The grandmother rushing the child to the hospital, hikers on alert. It's going to happen when you go into their environment. But I mean, the best you can do is just make yourself big. Rangers say it's rare, but children are easy targets. Last May, authorities killed a mountain lion that attacked a four-year-old boy at the nearby Los Penasquitos Canyon Preserve. You know, more than half of California is considered mountain lion habitat. Wardens have taken a DNA sample from the child's wound. They think they can use it to determine whether they're dealing with a mountain lion or a bobcat. It's their, like, house. Like, it's their, it's where they live, you know. It's, it's us. It's, like, we're the intruding. Ones are, yeah. Now, Fish and Wildlife officials emphasize they're reluctant to use euthanize an animal unless it poses a threat to humans. Whether euthanization is an option here, we'll have to wait and see. The number of coronavirus cases in San Diego County has now surpassed 9,000. There were 132 new cases confirmed out of 6,384 tests. That's about a 2% positive rate. There are now 9,130 confirmed cases. Those are just the confirmed cases. Five new deaths were reported, bringing that total to 313. San Diego is getting back to business. Today, bars, gyms, and museums got the green light to reopen if they choose to. And starting Friday, next Friday, nail salons, massage services, and tattoo shops will also be able to serve clients after being closed for months. But as these reopenings get underway, health officials are monitoring a series of triggers or red flags that could potentially require pulling back. News 8's Richard Allen has more. Well, that's right. Nail salons like this one are among hundreds of businesses given the green light to reopen as of next Friday. The owner of this business says she's been waiting for that day since having to close down more than three months ago. Yes, the wait's finally over. Sky Tong owns Nail Nailstalgic Salon on Mission Gorge Road and is overjoyed at the prospect of being able to open up shop once again. Being uncertain for so long and just kind of be, being dragged out and finally getting an answer. So now it's like I can execute and, and look, have something to look forward to. Sky has already been making preparations, such as piping to be able to install dividers between her clients and manicurists. She's also anxious to see the state's specific requirements. There's a lot of questions that I, that I have and hoping I get the guidelines so I can go ahead and execute and we can you know, I can train my staff properly. Along with nail salons, tattoo shops, massage therapy, and other personal care services will also be allowed to reopen next Friday if they choose. This comes as bars, hotels, gyms, movie theaters, and other phase three businesses were allowed to reopen today. I mean, the fact that these businesses may reopen next week doesn't mean the crisis is over. County leaders stress that as these large scale reopenings occur, they are closely monitoring a series of potential triggers that would signal an alarming uptick in COVID cases, such as ICU capacity, availability of PPE, and very importantly, the number of community outbreaks. In the past seven days, there have been four of them. These outbreaks have been at a restaurant, in an office building, 
Uh, we have previously seen them in churches, individuals' homes, uh, parties, unauthorized weddings. Seven such outbreaks over a rolling seven-day period would trigger the need to potentially take action. The purpose for having the triggers is that if they do go awry, then we would have to dial back down. Which could possibly mean a halt to the reopenings. And I know that no one wants to do that. And county leaders have also launched a new website to let San Diegans know the closest place where they can get a COVID-19 test. For more information, just go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. Back to you. All right, Richard, thanks. Today in Oceanside, people rallied against police injustice. Protesters gathered around 4 p.m. and began their route at the target on El Camino Real, then headed across Jefferson onto Vista Way. The protest remained peaceful. At Waterfront Park, hundreds of people took part in another peaceful protest. A yoga session ended at the park with a moment of silence that dedicated 8 minutes and 48 seconds in remembrance of George Floyd. Another protest will be held tomorrow at Waterfront Park in support of defunding the police department. And in La Jolla, protesters also called for police reform. More than 300 people rallied for police reform and racial equality at La Jolla Cove this afternoon. Today's Black Lives Matter flower march was organized by a local teenager, 17-year-old Danica Zikas of La Mesa. I believe that black lives matter and it's important to give everybody today space to voice their experiences and their opinions. One of the supporters at that protest rallies are planned in downtown East County and North County throughout the weekend. Dozens turned out for a rally in Chula Vista this afternoon calling on the city council to permanently remove a statue of Christopher Columbus. City officials tell us the statue in Discovery Park was removed and placed into storage this morning due to public safety concerns. But indigenous people and others don't want to see it put back up. This represented enslavement. This represented repression. This represented all the things that almost annihilated our people. The group is also calling on the city council to rename Discovery Park and recognize Indigenous Peoples Day over Columbus Day. Thieves have scammed several local grandparents out of tens of thousands of dollars. It's a story we first brought you earlier this week. News aide's Alicia Summers shows us how the scam works and has more about the additional victims. This is the first time we're getting a good look at this unidentified woman without a mask on. This video was taken last month. You could see her walking up to a grandmother's door in El Cajon. Hi, the grandmother hands her $7,600 cash, but it's under false pretenses. Did you want to look at it or not? Uh, no, I, I can't admit no. Oh, okay, well then, please. Yep. Okay, your okay. name is um, Jessica? Yes. Okay, okay. okay, if you're going right back there. Yes. Okay, thank you. The elaborate scam plays out the same way it did for the last victim I interviewed in Claremont, who says she handed the same woman $9,000 on Tuesday. She said to move your butt. Okay. Because they're on a deadline. Okay, have a great day. Thank, thank you. You, you too. Okay, she's off. Another victim in Spring Valley contacted News 8 as well and says the same woman took $20,000 from her father last Thursday. She looked about 25, wearing khaki pants, like a sports bra. Each incident starts with a phone call. Someone pretends to be their grandson who is sick, so they sound a bit different, then says he was arrested and pleads for help to get out of jail. He was panicked. You know, he was panicked, and all he could think of was, I've, I have to help get him out of there. The fake grandson asks the victim to not tell mom and dad because he wants to tell them in person. Then someone who claims to be an attorney gets on the phone and asks for thousands in cash that will be returned after the grandson is out of jail. The victim is urged to rush to the bank because of a deadline. It ends with this person sent to pick up the cash as you see here and here. 
where you can even hear the fake attorney speaking. Okay, so she has that she's going? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Alicia Summers, News 8. If you have any information on the suspects in this scam, those images were quite clear. We've posted a link with each case number on our website. Go to CBS8.com and click on the Help button.